Hello, I'm Tom Stapledon, and I've got another talk for you on behalf of the Friends of Williamson's Tunnels. This time, the talk is going to be about some exploratory work that we undertook back in 2017 um, off our normal site, which is the site of Joseph Williamson's own house. Um, the site we're going to look at is uh, right next door. And uh, I'll just show you this slide here to start off with. Um, this is an overhead view looking down on part of uh, Mason Street, the street where Joseph Williamson's house used to stand. That's Mason Street running along there. And this is the frontage or part of the frontage of Joseph Williamson's own house, the only bit of his work above ground that still remains. And it still looks like that now today. But um, all the buildings behind here replace Joseph Williamson's house, this one, number 40 and 42 Mason Street, and the adjacent house, number 44. They were all knocked down apart from this bit of frontage in 1936 when um, PM Williamson's garage company moved into the site, demolished all of the uh, buildings that stood there, put up by Joseph Williamson, and then put up more modern buildings covering the whole site right back to the back fence. And this is what you see here in the 1990s, um, probably late 1990s, when the buildings had been uh, vacated, became derelict and were due to be pulled down in uh, 1999. Uh, on the left is the uh, factory of um, a company called Merseyflex. Uh, this building was demolished in um, 2019, and that one is right next to the railway cutting, Edge Hill to Lime Street, on the little triangle of land in that corner there. On the other side of the Williamson House site, we have this large factory building. This was the uh, factory of uh, Magnet and Southern's joinery factory. That was pulled down in um, January 2016, I think. And uh, all three sites belong to Liverpool City Council, and they are now all vacant sites. Um, we hope we are safe sitting here in the middle, uh, but nothing so far drastic has been done with the site either side of us. Hope it stays that way. This is... Um, uh, a portion of uh, an army plan drawn up by the territorials in uh, about 1880, 1880 to show um, some of the tunnels that they knew to exist underneath the land that they occupied. Now, this um, central green triangle is our Williamson House site. This red triangle, did I say triangle? This is a rectangle. <laughs> the Williamson House site. And this red triangle on the right of it is where the Merseyflex uh, factory stood. And this area, it's supposed to be in blue, but it's not very clear, is where the Magnet Joinery factory stood. And below the Magnet Joinery factory, we believe somewhere in this area is one of Williamson's largest structures, if it's still intact, the one we call the Great Tunnel. Um, it's been the holy grail for us. We've been searching for it for years and we still haven't managed to find it. But it should lie somewhere between uh, below this land. Um, here's a an overhead view looking down from the new multi-storey car park that's standing on the land below us now. Um, this is looking almost straight down. Williamson House site here. The house frontage still standing there where the Merseyflex factory stood to the right. And this large area here is the site that did house the Magnet Factory until 2016. And we believe that the Great Tunnel is here, somewhere underneath this stretch of land. There's a, it's difficult to see looking straight down on it like this, but there's a, uh, a long, very high brick wall uh, holding up this land. It's about four or five metres high, I think. So all the land in this area has been built up from its original um, slope. And uh, it's that wall there that's holding it up. We tried digging in through this wall, uh, lower ground, to get into the, uh, the Great Tunnel, but we failed. This was uh, several years ago. Anyway, um, we moved into the Williamson's house site in um, the very end of 2016 with permission to uh, start excavating and emptying out the chambers that lay below. 
we were finally given full access and permission to excavate in November 2016. So during 2017, we were working on various fronts, um, clearing out uh, cellars just below the surface, um, clearing out the, the massive uh, kitchen area that we uncovered, the banqueting hall, and this, our sandstone chamber. This is the chamber that people used to have to go down into with a long ladder, seven meter long ladder, and then make their way down to the banqueting hall via the gash. This we call our sandstone chamber. And uh, we're in the process of excavating this sometime in early 2017, I think. We've taken uh, most of this material out now right down to its floor, but we're in the middle of the process at this point. And of um, course, this always intrigued us, um, a smaller brick arch built into the end of the sandstone arch. And we always assumed that uh, that tunnel uh, continued, or rather we assumed that it was the tunnel, and it continued onto the, um, the magnet land beyond and would probably lead us into the uh, Great Tunnel. Um, so in early 2017, we uh, started negotiating with Liverpool City Council and asked them if we could have permission to go onto the site and have a dig to see if we could find out what lay beyond um, this um, brick arch here. And they gave us permission. We got on the land in uh, April 2017 with the digger. Uh, we only had it for a couple of days and we went straight to this spot um, on the other side of our fence. And this is where the uh, sandstone chamber lies behind this piece of brick wall. The diggers dug quite a deep trench coming down from behind the cameraman here. So you could uh, walk comfortably down into this trench. And... Um, it's amazing how much stuff comes out of what you think is quite a small hole. It made a real mess. And uh, that's the sloping ramp where we were able to walk down to the position that was right behind that uh, sandstone chamber end wall. And uh, there's another angle. I think the, um, the top of the roof of the uh, brick arch at the back of the sandstone chamber should be just about visible at this point. We found another interesting thing in the process of digging out this trench. That is brick wall, quite definitely. And uh, this is the boundary wall between properties, between Williamson's house and the houses he built on the land adjoining back in the 1800s. Uh, but we found uh, at this point here, I think, a rather interesting piece of wall. This is made of sandstone blocks, neatly cut sandstone blocks. And some of them, in fact, have, uh, it's difficult to see from this picture, but they've got the nice Williamson pattern carved onto them, like a picture frame. A uh, very carefully made piece of wall. And uh, we didn't know what to make of it. But um, this picture doesn't really show it. But this, this um, um, brick wall adjoining is perfectly straight. And yet the sandstone wall seems to be sloping downhill, left to right. And we couldn't make out whether this might have been built that way deliberately, which seemed unlikely, or whether it was leaning down that way because of some kind of subsidence because of what was going on down below. We did at a later date have another dig uh, on the other side of our fence on, on our own land on the house site um, behind here to see if we could find any sign of a building or, uh, or this wall or any other walls. But we didn't actually find anything. So it was uh, rather odd. We've not made any sense of that. In fact, there are a lot of things we haven't made sense of here. Uh, this is Chris Sharples. He's managed to get down to the bottom of the trench we dug. And at this point here, there's a hole just underneath the brick arch that was visible in the sandstone chamber. And then there's another hole just above the brick arch. Well, this should be a short video that Chris Isles made on that day. Coming down the trench that you walk down. Here's the brick arch here, looking underneath it into the sandstone chamber. And then looking over the top to another hole. And uh, a couple of us are working down there. We're still in the process of clearing this out. There's an awful lot of rubble there to go. it I think. Thank you Chris for taking that video.
very much worth having. But unfortunately, this uh, this dig didn't turn up anything important for us, I'm afraid. There is absolutely no sign, uh, as you can see there, of this uh, brick arch or tunnel continuing. Uh, there wasn't even any sign of where the brick arch could have been uh, sitting. There was no, uh, um, no foundations for the brick arch. Everything was gone. The only thing we did find was what uh, looked like there had been a, uh, a set of stairs in that brick wall. You could see where the stairs had been set into the side of the wall above the sandstone chamber. And we saw various pieces of broken up uh, sandstone steps. So we think there'd been a staircase going down there, but no sign of um, this thing continuing as a tunnel. So it definitely doesn't go into the uh, Great Tunnel at that point. Now, later in the year, we had a second dig on the Magnet site. This time, we thought we'd see if we could dig down and find the roof of the Great Tunnel, as we'd failed to get into it from the lower land um, behind that fence at the back there. This is looking towards the rear of the site. There's that, that fence that you can see there beyond the digger is sitting on the top of that very high brick wall. The land below is uh, very much lower. These are, uh, I think, four-story flats, and you can only see the, the top floor and the roof at that point. So it's a long way down. And uh, we thought we'd have a dig here. We got permission the second time from Liverpool City Council. And we um, we hired a larger digger this time. This is a tract machine. Uh, cost, us, cost us a lot more because it has to be delivered and uh, taken away on uh, a low loader wagon, which makes it much more expensive than the smaller machine that we used the first time, which just trundled up from Garston on, on the roads. Uh, so here we are digging in very much the same sort of area. The area of the first dig was close to the fence and a bit further down this way, off to the left off the uh, off the photo. And this is further back on the site where we believe the Great Tunnel should be lying below this ground. And this time we're exposing, as, as he digs, we're exposing the foundations of the Magnet Joinery Factory. This is the foundation ring which went all the way around the... Um, um, the outside of the building. This is what the brick walls were built on. Uh, it may not be uh, very clear, really, but in actual fact, these lumpy bits every few feet uh, are capping, um, concrete cappings for piles that have been driven right down in the ground. That is a pile there. There's another one there. And they go down about 40, 50 feet into the ground. Uh, we didn't know it at the time, but these were a big problem to us later when we discovered the magnet chamber that lies below this land, a bit further this way. Um, we found uh, several of these piles that had been punched right through the brick arched roof of the magnet chamber and did a lot of damage. So uh, that was really uh, quite bad for us. It's uh, left us boxed into a small section of that magnet chamber, which we know to be very much longer but we can't progress without making the roof safe. There's another angle. That has got a pile running straight down there. And uh, the area of the uh, magnet chamber that we're uh, in at the moment is pretty much under there. So probably under the next set of piles. Very inconvenient. Anyway, uh, our digger dug uh, an enormous hole here. And as he dug, he started to turn up these walls. Now, we had no idea that we should be expecting to find anything like this. That is the corner of a massive stone built wall there. And he's dug in two directions. Um, that way is towards Mason Street. This way is parallel with the back fence. And uh, it, it's uh, quite a massive excavation we we uh, we dug here. And the, the amount of spoil that we ended up with on the surface was uh, enormous. Uh, and we had to put it all back, of course. Uh, the excavation went down probably about 18 feet. Uh, this was a much larger machine with a much uh, greater reach than the first one. And uh, here again, you can see the um, foundations for the magnet factory running along the back fence. And uh, you can see how big that wall is. Now, it doesn't appear to be a building. It's, it's a very odd structure. It's obviously going to be something to do with Joseph Williamson, but it doesn't appear to be a building. Why these walls? We have no idea. And all buried and nobody knew it was there. This is looking along the back, uh, the back wall of where the magnet factory stood again. And this here, I think probably was about the deepest point that the digger got down to. I think it was about 17 or 18 feet below ground. 
quite a massive excavation. And we were all totally puzzled. We didn't know what we were looking at, why it exists, what it was for. So uh, if anybody can think of any ideas, we're open to ideas. Because uh, there was not supposed to be any kind of a building on this land that we knew of. Uh, the Williamson uh, houses were on the um, on the edge of Mason Street at the other end of this plot of land. Shouldn't have been any buildings on the rear of it. So that is the deepest spot we got to down there, I think. There's our Rex digging around, trying to look for clues as to what's going on in the bottom of that excavation. Looking in the other direction, it goes round the corner there and towards Mason Street. And then as we excavated this side out, uh, this is coming towards Mason Street here and away from the back fence. Uh, these appeared, we, we actually found two of these things side by side. They have been arches built into this wall. It's damaged at the top, but the remains of the arch are still there. And these two arches have been bricked in. We've, we've got quite used to Williamson building arches and then these arches getting bricked in. Whether he had them bricked in after having the arches built or whether somebody's done it at a later date is still a, a mystery. There are various arches filled in on the um, uh, Williamson house site and we don't know who, who did the filling in. But th this is what's happened. And the uh, this arch, um, the section of it you can see here has, has also been rendered. The end of it has been rendered in cement. And uh, that also we, we can't understand. Um, the render on that end wall and we had a dig on the other side of the wall here uh, because we, at this point we, we couldn't make out whether it was actually part of a building or if not a building what what are these walls for so we we had a dig here and we couldn't find any sign that it was a building but from this point we could look through um at one spot and we could look underneath the arch um and the inside of the arch has turned out to be rendered as well, which is odd. Uh, there was a rather interesting little um, cutout in this corner. Uh, although the, the, the bulk of the arch had been bricked up, the second one, by the way, is, is almost totally gone. There's a little bit of rendered arch there, but it, it went over like that. Most of it has disappeared. Uh, but it has been a complete arch. We, we could see it well enough to know that it had been. One arch there, the second one a bit further on, side by side. Very odd. And in that um, that hole in the um, the brickwork of the first arch, there's a rather interesting uh, inset piece of brickwork, curved brickwork. It's very difficult to get a feel for exactly what this is you're looking at. In three dimensions, it was a very interesting bit of curved brickwork set into the wall. Very odd. Um, there it is again. I have no idea what it could be. But as it, as it happens, um, some of us several years ago uh, had a nose around on a, on a building site just up Wavertree Road, just a couple of hundred yards up from Paddington, where an old building had been demolished and they were about to start uh, building something else to replace it. This building had um, a, uh, a cellar below it and they cleared out right to the base of where the cellar had stood. And it was a completely empty site when we accidentally found our way in and had a look round because it looked a rather interesting site and uh, in that site we found this which is so similar to the thing we've just been looking at but this is actually more intricate this is built into the side wall of uh, what was a basement um the, there were some uh, what looked like tunnels going under the pavement of Wavertree Road, but they didn't go very far. But this one was in the sidewall. If you stood in front of this and looked at it, it would really mess with your eyes. In three dimensions, that brickwork is so incredibly clever, the way they've done that. And that's the only thing that I've seen that was anything like um, what we were dealing with there on the magnet site. Uh, there's that little bit of arch that still exists of the, uh, the second arch. And uh, then looking from underneath, from behind, where we had a dig, you can see that it's been rendered on the inside edge as well. So there we have it. We didn't find the Great Tunnel. We didn't get down low enough to find the Great Tunnel. We didn't find bedrock. Um, we didn't find anything that we were expecting to find. 
and these these um, strange walls are as much of a mystery to us now as they were when we first looked, and they were certainly quite unexpected. So uh, we now know from uh, a couple of borehole surveys that have been done over the years that uh, from the base of that high wall behind this land, which is a lot lower than this land, uh, borehole surveys have gone down 18 and a half metres in the ground before hitting the bedrock. So that's telling us now that um, there is one very, very deep quarry on that land and it's all been filled in and it probably means that the Great Tunnel has been set in very, very much lower in the ground than we ever expected and we're going to have to find another way to get into it and it certainly won't be from digging down from the surface as we uh, as we did here. But still, it was an interesting dig and we found these walls and um, we can keep on puzzling about what it's all about. So that's just about all I've got to show you about our uh, excavations on the uh, magnet joinery factory site. It's still open and empty at the moment. We're hoping it stays that way because we'd like to get back on there for a third time with another digger and dig down to the roof of the magnet chamber, which we've since discovered, and uh, try and assess the damage to the roof where the piles have gone through. And then the uh, plan would be to try and make good the damage so that we can carry on digging through from underneath because there's a lot more to discover there. So uh, that's about it. That's about all I've got to show you. Thank you for watching.